Have you ever thought of um, changing your music? No. Changing your Why should you change music? Some Mozart people, didn't change. Bach didn't change. Some people call it progressive, Louis. Well, what is progressive? You tell me, because all we play is good music. We never did worry about styles. Ain't no such thing as styles in music. Ain't but two kinds, good or bad. That's all. Now that progressive and all that jujitsu music and all that, you can have it. I'm not interested, because I get my applause for playing good. In any language, a note's a note. Do you think then that some of these um, people that play today uh, spend too much time in worrying about fantastic pieces to play and forget the simplicity? I'm not interested. If I buy a record, it suits my taste, got the beat and the tone and what I like, that's all. I ain't worried about the fellas, they ain't what they ain't doing. That ain't my position. Uh, I got a lot of my personal worries. So I go by my ear, what I hear. That's why I buy records. Like the Beatles, ain't no record gonna top the hard day's night in my library, in my house. See what I mean? You think that was the best? It's like some people, you can tell the first joke and knock them out, and you come back with a hundred more, they still remember the first joke. So that's my record, and uh, ain't nothing gonna top that hard day's night. Understand? Sure, yeah. So there you sure. go. So I don't care what the other fella's doing, I ain't got time. Why should I? Anyway, I'm not booking them. But is there any particular music that you like? All music. I like all music that's good. I played in a symphony orchestra in 1925 for silent pictures. And we played everything you hear these big orchestras playing. Right there on, in, in the Vendome Theater in Chicago. And we changed programs twice a week with movies. And we play an overture. Then we go into the jazz. Quite nice. That's how I got in there. But still, in all look at the experience I had by being there, waiting for myself to come in with the jazz chorus or whatever it is. But we play an overture first. And there's the experience right there. William Tell was nothing after I was there two weeks. Understand? Because I was interested in my horn and everything went with it. And, uh, it wasn't much different, the divisions of the, the measures and all that that we did in the funeral marches, three, four time, four, four time, 12, eight time, the same. So everything's been done before, nothing new. But I listened to the best of music, which is just plain music. But you got to stand on your head and all that, but that's their business. But do you think that the, that the people that played in your early day played from the heart rather, from the, rather than from the mind? I don't know what they did. I don't know where they blew it from. They, they could have took some beans that night and you can tell where they blew it from. They all have been 40 years old, who knows? <laughs> That's their business. But if it sounded good, I don't care where it came from. You understand? Yeah. Music is music. That's all I go by. I'm not such a technician, and that's the worst thing, put that on, the worst thing the public, and especially musicians, they ruin music, musicians trying to play for them, so they can say, man, you out of this world, and they ain't even paid for to get in the damn concert or the hall. If you'd have gone and pleased them people that appreciate it, like wonderful world, that's just a tame uh, tune to your hip, uh, if you're called a hip musician. And they ask him to play it, you know, you have the tone to play it. Which telling all if you don't blow your brains out, that's what ruined a lot of musicians through the years. And ruined music. Trying to please the other musician that even can't play nothing himself. A very profound statement. You bet your life. I like lost my lip trying to please these cats. Standing there with their arms full. Mm -hmm. What? What can you play? So I cut it out. So you get results. And that's what I want. People that dig what's supposed to, you're, you're supposed to sing. You're supposed to relax. You're supposed to play. And uh, and them cats, are, when I looked around, I said, you did, they're BSing. So I cut out from them. That's why you have a whole lot of jujitsu music and all that stuff. Now it's played out. 
They say, what is it about the progressive change, the music of tomorrow? I said, we didn't go through all that. As long as it sounded good, from Buddy Bowling's time up to now, King Oliver, everything he played, you hear it now in five-part brass and things. Dig that. Else they wouldn't have had nothing to, to survive on. Don't be for King Oliver. Leave that. It goes all over the world. Every time they make a riff, it's Joe Oliver. Creator. How many trumpet players coming up today is a creator? Tell me. Name one. There's 10 billion trumpet players. Name one that you think's a creator. You got me there. And if you name one, I'll kiss your pocketbook. <laughs> Is there any particular Oliver that you like and have always liked? Who? Any particular King Oliver that you've always liked? Everything he did. When I ate red beans and rice with him at his house, and uh, he had a big tin bucket full of sweetened water, just sugar and water. He didn't want coffee and all that. Just a big bucket of sweetened water to rinse them beans down. His wife, Miss Oliver, made me a little bucket too, like the three little bears. I had my little bucket too. Because Joe Oliver, whatever he did, I want to do. All that was music. He never told me yet. He catch me on the street. All them cats too busy to, to uh, I'm around 17 years old. Uh, uh, with my lesson, I run it to him. The rest of the cats, they go into the Eagle Saloon. I ain't got time, boy. But Joe Oliver stops and no, you're dividing that wrong. Before you go into the saloon and have his drink. So you got to love him. They was too great. So like this little kid here. They was too great. Oh, he's just a little shaver, so what? But to me, the notes that came out of that horn. So beautiful. I know a million trumpet players would give anything in the world to sound like this kid sounded today in that airport. And that's what I listened to. The notes come out of his horn. Every note he hit meant something. The tone's always been important to you, Louis. The notes, too. It's got to come from his mind and his heart to make the notes that little boy played. And the average cat, he ain't thinking about how much I'm going to get for the gig tonight. He ain't got time to think of that. This boy ain't worried about nothing but the beauty. This thing, if he start playing and keep playing till he's about 17 years old, there you go. Nobody touch him. And all he could do is blow out an arrow. He didn't know it himself. You don't have to kill yourself to play good music. 